What is up, guys? Corey Allen here with the Overton Report. Man, there are so many things going on. We are really reaching a precipice. We are up against the clock right now. So many people are, are just about to lose their jobs. By the middle of this month, so many people are facing one of the most difficult decisions of their lives. And we could go back to about a year ago when so many of us were screaming at the top of our lungs, guys, we have to fight this now before it's too late, before it comes to your doorstep because it is very close to your doorstep. Unfortunately, a lot of people have to be actually put into a position where something is personally affecting them before they even notice it. That's human nature. There's no blame game. That's neither here nor there. It is what it is. Here we are. Here we are at a fork in the road. In South Carolina, the legislature was set to meet on December 6th to discuss redistricting. A lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, a lot of work was put in to try and convince them to begin holding this session early. That was part A of step one. And we succeeded in that. You succeeded in that. Nobody, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> nobody that I've ever spoken to, and I had a hand in trying to organize these phone calls, these email campaigns, these visits to our representatives' offices. Nobody ever made the claim that, oh, this is literally all we have to do, everything's good now. As a matter of fact, the moment, the moment that we found out that they were going to session early, we began speaking with the authorities at the Capitol in Columbia, getting ready to apply physical in-person pressure to the legislature when they went back early. That is step two. Ha! Step one, usually when somebody says step one complete, that implies at least a second step. So here we are. December 1st, we will be there early, but the official event begins at 1 p.m. Uh, I would urge you to get there about noon because there's a lot to do. There are multiple options, and I've spoken on this often. There's a bill that was written that we can attempt to change the signida to bring this bill up. It's going to be difficult. We'll need 100% of the Republican vote and two Democrats in order to get that two-thirds that we need, 83. 83 is the magic number. We're working. It's, it's, it's a hard road. Nobody said this was going to be easy, except for the people who lied to you and told you, give us all the power and we'll save you. You don't have to do anything. We always told you that was a lie. Nobody's coming to save you, and we all have to play our part, including you. That's the reality of it. December 1st, the State House will be in session. We can try to push for this bill. We can try and get S-177 uh, voted through. But I'll tell you what we can't do. We cannot wait until the legislature ends their session, then three days later, go to the Capitol when it's closed and demand action. You know what that's called? Virtue signaling. You know what else that's called? Useless. That's useless. Now, I know that on the 4th, there's an event. Great. If you can go to both, please do. Please do. But if you plan to take part in actually moving the ball forward instead of just going there after the fact, I definitely encourage you to join us on the first. There are a lot of people 
that are going to talk out of one side of their mouth about unity. And then there are other people who are going to put that into action. It's very interesting that the people talking about unity and working together are always the ones with specific lists of people they refuse to work with. That's very strange to me. It's very strange. Very weird. What do you say? Let me ask you a question. What is the use of showing up to a battlefield three days after the battle ends, dressed to the nines and ready to fight? The battle's over. It was decided days prior. And now here you are, standing in an empty battlefield with nobody around to do what? To congratulate our side on winning if we have fought for you and won? Or to berate us for losing while refusing to take part in the battle when it was actually taking place? What's the goal here? What's the goal of showing up to the State House at least two days after our only chance has already come and gone? What's the goal? I hate to speculate on what that possible goal may be, but the only thing that I can imagine is to point a finger, be mad, while fomenting the loss. We're not going to help you fight it, but we will complain after the fight's over. But let me be clear. If we would have come together and fought this a year ago, if all of us, even the people whose jobs weren't a week away from being completely dismantled and destroyed, if, if people had stood up a year ago before it was directly affecting their own livelihoods, we would have already won this. We would have already won this, but we're not going to go back and look at the past. We're going to move forward and we're going to do what we can to win. End these mandates and to help people save their livelihoods. I don't like to play that game, not showing up to the battle, showing up days later, pointing a finger and saying, y'all should have done better. No, I should have done better. If that's the case, the person not showing up on the actual day of session is the one who should have done better. I have made this point a thousand times on the Overton Report and in person. Ask anybody who knows me. A thousand people on the steps of your state house have more power than a hundred thousand on the steps of Congress. And anybody anybody who sits there and says no 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 don't you dare go to the state house while they're actually in session don't you dare go in person and let them know how you feel while they're actually there i don't know man that's not me and i never will be so if you want to be effective if you want to play a part in the actual battle, if you want to be in the game and not just come to the field days later to complain about having not taken part in the loss or the win, be my guest. But that's not me. And that's not hundreds of others, hopefully thousands of others. So here we are. And we all have to make this decision on our own. Do we want to be a part of the solution or do we want to stand on the sidelines, wait till the game's over and play Monday morning or I'm sorry, Saturday afternoon quarterback? The choice is yours. The choice is each of ours. It's a damn shame that some factions have decided to make this some weird personal intra-party nonsense that the majority of folks just don't care about. It's a shame. Here's what I want. I want as many South Carolinians to keep their job as possible. And here's what I know. I know that showing up after session ends will play zero role in convincing the legislature to do anything. 
How could it? The time will have already passed. There will be dozens of grassroots groups represented on December 1st. There will be hundreds, and I hope over a thousand South Carolinians on the State House grounds on December 1st. And that is when we get to face the legislature. And that is when we get to tell them what we want and show them what, what we want. In person, in no uncertain terms, we'll all be there that day. Any time after that is just spitting in the wind. That's the reality of it. Some people will tell you, oh, Henry McMaster could call a special session. No, he can't. I'm sorry, but our executive branch in this state has limited power for a reason. Sometimes it hurts us on the side of conservatism. Sometimes it helps us. But the fact remains that that is the fact. Sorry. I'm sorry that that's the reality. Now, of course, he could call a state of emergency. Of course he could. But those aren't just words. That opens up your cities and your counties to do the same things that they did last year that hurt so many and made so many businesses go under never to reopen again. Is that what we want to open up? As a last resort, possibly. But why don't we try to do as many things as possible first? We have other options. But none of those options will be available after session ends. There are doers and there are complainers. There are even people out there that make you think they're doing things when they know very well that what they're planning will have no bearing on the outcome. I hate factional nonsense. I hate the intra-party drama. I hate when people are going out there to just discredit and denigrate people who are trying to move the ball forward for their own ego's sake. Principles over personalities. And the reality of the situation is that December 1st is our last best chance. So if you agree with the majority of us, that it's best to show up to the legislature while the legislature's in session if you have any hope of getting anything done then I highly and strongly encourage you to join us on December 1st at the State House in Columbia and hey maybe a few days later we can all meet back there and have a celebratory event and we can cheer on those who decided to show up on the correct day to fight for us all. Maybe we can do that. What do you say? We'll see you guys there.